Uh, hey everyone, welcome to another lesson with the great Benji Fishy. Hello, hello. Been setting any new records lately? New records? Yeah. Um. Oh, you talk. I, uh, I, I did. I won. It was actually nine games. I won nine games in a row. Nine and games a draw. in a row. And you almost made it to a thousand rating, right? I'm on nine eighty three right now. That's pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Hopefully I... by tonight. Oh really? Yeah, it's like that, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I need to I need to be on the grind. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll be doing some game reviews today, including looking over Benji's openings, maybe making some adjustments there. Um, and first up is a game he played in the French Defense. An opening Very at nice. which you're an expert now. I don't think so, yeah. I mean, it's working so well. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I, it's incredible. I'm watching your games, and and you're just getting awesome positions every single time. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so um, e5. This uh, what I find interesting about the fact that you've gr grinded. Is that a word? Grind, grind, being grinding. Yeah. Um. Is that um, we now know that almost all people your level go e5. Yeah, I'd say I'd say that happens more than um than taking actually. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's very clear. Almost everyone is doing this, and a lot of people are doing this bishop check. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, but I I think you've been doing very well uh, dealing yeah. with the bishop check. I just always apply with my own bishop because yeah. I, I I did it one time. There was one game where I played my knight and then I had to move my knight and then push the pawn. Yeah, that's and not it was, great. It was, yeah, it was just annoying. Yeah, you can also just move your pawn. The idea that's is true. that when when the bishop goes back, then you can move it one more time and then you get your knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I I, I I like the general principle you've been applying with moving the bishop. Because mm -hmm. also if they if they trade like that's a that's a really good for me because I don't really do that like it's hard to use my my bishop. Yeah, precisely. So. Um, so e five happening a lot of uh, so many games, and here you're out with your queen early, putting pressure on the d four pawn, all yeah. according to plan. Mm -hmm. Um, and here after bishop e three, you took on b two. Yeah. Um, and what I've been noticing in your games is that when they play like this normal method, uh, like this, uh, and then the queen comes out, putting pressure in towards d4, yep. I've seen so many games where your opponent plays bishop e3. Yeah, people play quite a lot. Yeah, this move has been very common. And what has also been common is that you respond by playing knight h6. Yeah, I, I do that quite a bit as well. Yeah, and I just want to remind you that part of the point of this opening is that you also put pressure on this pawn on b2. Yeah, I think I think I, I realized that recently. Like I I think in my recent years I've been doing it quite a lot as well with that with that queen. Um, I think when I first started doing it, I didn't really realize how how strong it was. But yeah. So um, this game uh, we're looking at now, you took the pawn immediately. But I've seen yeah. like three or four games where you haven't taken that pawn as early as you could have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, but here you did, uh, and you uh, continued developing to put pressure on the pawn in the center. Yeah. When he took your pawn... Then you played this queen a3 move uh, in order to capture it back. Mm -hmm. A cooperation between your queen and bishop. I think uh, so far, good job. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, knight b5. Uh, personally, I would prefer to go queen a5 here. Mm. Uh, and yeah. that's because... Um, I like having oh, yeah. the option of just going back to defense. 
Because mm-hmm. at this point, you already have that uh, advantage with the pawn you captured. And what yeah. has happened a couple of times is that your queen kind of gets stuck in the mud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did. I did. I, I was thinking because I, I was scared that my queen was just going to get stuck. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't. I don't know how I didn't. Well, see but that. then this yeah. is this is good to be aware of. Just yeah, a, mm-hmm. a safe route home. Yeah. Uh, instead, you played queen b4, which is fine, uh, and he made a huge mistake. Uh, mm. with the queen when he could have played the knight to give protection to the other guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in this situation, your queen placement would be a bit unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, I, should, don't I just take the pawn with my uh, bishop? Well, here's the thing. When you take that pawn, your opponent will attack your queen. Hmm. Oh, and then and then after move, then my bishop's hanging? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah. Anyway, this worked. You took the knight. Um, here's another instance. Uh, so here you took the pawn on c5. Mm-hmm. But I, I would be a bit careful about putting the queen on the same diagonal as the opponent's bishop. Yeah, in case in case of a discovery. Yeah. So here he could have played like knight takes e6. And you're still winning, but it, it's kind of annoying that the knight is just re- wreaking havoc. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, maybe, Which done it said. for instance, uh, just going for the queen trade. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, since you already won a knight, uh, you're pretty eager to exchange queens. But anyway, this worked out brilliantly. Uh, I really like that you're using this square for the knight now. Because you mm-hmm. kind of see that the main thing is getting the knight here. Yeah, I learned that from... Oh, I, I started doing it more because um, the thing with Anna. Um, because I played in my game against her. I played here. Oh, no, no, no. I played I played my bishop here before I... Um, before I... Yeah. Well, I I want to say that just because you had a bad experience with the the knight being captured on the edge, doesn't mean yeah. it's a bad move. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, if you can avoid it, then oftentimes it's good. Okay. And, I, and the reason say, you can avoid yeah. uh, can avoid it is that you don't have these two pawns looking at each other. Hmm. Uh, because because normally that's the reason you want to have your bishop. Uh, this diagonal open for the bishop so that the bishop can get involved in case of a trade. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, if uh, if I do end up playing the knight over here um, and then it gets captured yeah. and I take here, do I do I castle queenside? Um, yeah, either is fine. Mm. Okay. So normally uh, what you would try to do is um yeah you can castle queenside personally i would go kingside mm-hmm. um and basically what's important is that you try and push this f6 as soon as possible okay. so, so what happened against anna was that you kind of got squeezed yeah uh so it's very important to try and put pressure in towards the middle and exploit yep. the fact that now you have a bishop that will uh, do a great job fighting for the dark squares. Yeah. And even those these pawns look bad, they're kind of doing a good job defending some squares around your king. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if the opponent had a knight and could jump up into the vicinity of your king, this wouldn't be great. Yeah, but often, oftentimes, white doesn't really have that maneuver available. Mm-hmm. Okay, good to know. But yeah, ninety seven was fine. You got the job done, which is getting yep. the knight here. Uh, and then he tried opening up the position, trying to create some chaos, and you weren't having any of it. 
Uh, so far, so good. Got your pieces out. Got your uh, stuff aimed at the opponent's king. Hmm. And I guess you remember what happened next. Uh oh yeah yeah oh this was so sad yeah this was so sad I I for some reason I thought he was just he was going here to protect this even though it was already protecting it and I don't know why yeah uh but the good news is uh losses like these you know that's gonna fix itself and I know I've been saying that for a week but I really mean it. Mm -hmm. these mistakes you're just going to grow out of and you're going to grow out of them pretty soon maybe yeah. we can do like more sessions where we talk about the opponent's intentions um, mm -hmm. and we definitely should do that before the tournament starts but for now I yeah. think we have we have plenty of time to keep keep working on your tactics keep working on uh, giving you those winning positions uh, yeah. and, and as long as you, the funny thing about your games is that you have a winning position from the opening almost every time. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. as long as we keep that trend going, um, as your rating increases and you meet, uh, stronger opponents, as long as we keep the trend of winning, uh, openings, uh, going, uh, you're always going to be, uh, you're always going to be doing well. Mm -hmm. I do feel like in the tournament, though, it might not be as... Since people like can prepare and stuff, it might be harder to get an advantage in the opening. Uh, yes, that is true. But at the same time, we're also going to be preparing for the opponents. Okay, yeah. So it, it'll, it'll go both ways. All right. Sounds good. I hope. Hmm. Um, I think so. Okay, yeah, let me find the next game. Okay, so here you have the white pieces. Yeah. And you're playing your knight first. Mm -hmm. And when he went c5, you went c4. This is actually uh, a very good move. Okay. It, it may not look like it because all the pawns are kind of looking at each other. Uh, but I think yeah. this is the best move for white. Mm -hmm. uh, and when he took your guy... Mm, here's the thing. I, I think you're supposed to take this guy. Yeah? But Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter though. But mm, basically... Uh yeah, I was just thinking because um, I was thinking if so when he took. Um, oh wait, I forgot. Yeah, is that is that what he did? Yeah, yeah. And then I take here, and then when he takes here, I push this and then take there. Yeah, so that's fine. So, yeah. So that's fine. Um, and that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, so my only concern is that he would play something like pawn here. Uh, and uh, then force your knight to move, and then force you to move your king. Yeah. But honestly, you're probably fine, because you can start making some threats in in his position as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's fine. Um, but here's the thing I want to talk about. Okay. I've been thinking, and I'm not sure you should be moving this guy too forward. Even no. when you have a chance to do so. I'm well, wondering if, I... if maybe moving it one forward is um, more consistently good. Uh, yeah, I normally said it because it, it took the center. Yeah, but here's the thing. Um, once you go too forward, you're kind of not giving a lot of attention to your um, uh, central pieces and, and the knight on d4. Mm. So while this pawn is doing a great job of attacking the d5 square, uh, which is a central square, uh, moving it one pawn, uh, one step forward is also controlling a central square, but it's controlling a central square where in this case you already have a piece. 
Yeah. Um, and I know you're concerned about your bishop mm. and that you don't yeah. want to block it. But I think there are many situations where you can capture this guy next. Um, and then maybe uh, after you castle, you can go for the fianchetto. Okay. And this is like really harmonious for white. With, yeah. With the bishop pointing down all the way. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So I think in general from now on, when your opponents capture the pawn on c4, we go only mm -hmm. one step forward. Okay. I and normally, uh, yeah, w when they don't capture, I normally do that because I'll play my bishop out. Yes. And then I'll, I don't know, I'll go here. Yes, yes. And that's absolutely correct. So now you're just going to do that even, even when you don't have the opportunity to get the bishop out because they took your pawn. Yeah, I would say it happens less now. Um, I, I was having, I, I was finding when I was like lower, when I was like around nine hundred, uh, people would, people would just think that I've like blundered a pawn, or something. Uh, but now, now people like they normally just play here or something. They, they, they normally yeah. just, they, they, they don't take it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm thinking also maybe we can make a rule that you always take this guy. If the opponent cannot capture back with a pawn. But, okay. I mean, yeah, normally you can just capture with his queen there. Yeah, right? so what happens here in this specific situation? If the queen gets out early, then you have the advantage of being able to attack this queen. Yeah. Either through uh, offering the queen exchange yourself, or... Uh, but this is specific to to this position. But what do you think about this move? Oh, that's good. That's a good move. Because then because, we're getting our yeah. knight into the game while attacking the queen. Tempo, yeah. That's really good. Yes, and that's a very good use of tempo. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I, I think in general, when the opponent cannot capture back with a pawn, you're going to want to take this. Okay. Yeah, I kind of, uh, I don't know, I feel like I have a, I feel like, because that pawn, like, I normally just sacrifice it, you know, like, it's meant to, like, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't use it a lot, kind of just let it sit there until it gets taken and I get my bishop out. Yeah. Well, we're we're evolving. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, the guy played his knight out, attacking your knight, but in doing so, he allowed you to make a trade to make his yeah. pawn structure worse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess oh, we haven't wait. talked about this, but this is a bad pawn structure because mm, these I two mean, guys cannot defend each other since they're not next to each other. Oh wait, well, I think is this the game? Oh, I can't remember which game it was. Um, yeah, so this is what we call split pawns. Yeah, and we say this guy on the edge is isolated because mm -hmm. there's no pawns next to it. Yeah, and this is also an isolated pawn because there's no pawns that can defend it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you took the pawn. He moved his pawn oh. forward in the center. And I thought I was so smart here. I thought I was so smart. Yeah. It was so close. Was, I, I saw this on TikTok as well. I saw this on TikTok. No, no joke. way. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this on TikTok, and that's why I did it. I was, I was, I was so happy because I thought it'd work. Uh, and I was, I was gonna send it to you right after and say I, I saw this on TikTok. Uh, <laughs> but then, but then he, he had one square, which yeah. Oh sucked. man, I'm the lucky. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a great tactic, though. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Maybe if you had taken his knight, maybe he would have fallen for this. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, it's not really a good move because he can take your queen instead. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but you gave a check. That's fine. 
Uh, you took his knight with your bishop in desperation of wanting to send me a TikTok clip. Um, Because you wanted him to take with the king. Yeah. And in, in in making this decision, you were not really thinking about the chess value of the moves. You were just thinking about, please let me take this queen so that I can tell Hammer about this... Another cool opening trap I learned on TikTok. Yeah, but it also fixes pawn structure. I saw. Sort of, I mean, this was kind of on its own. Yeah. So from now on, we're never gonna give up this bishop for this knight unprovoked. Yeah. I normally, I've been doing it when when this gets pressured. Yes. I normally take. And I have seen the games where you've been doing that, and I think let's continue doing that. Okay. Whenever cool. he. Pr- puts pressure on your bishop you're allowed to give it away okay nice okay uh but that situation you're not yeah um yeah and solid moves thereafter you're up a pawn yeah. uh going for trades wow the guy is voluntarily giving away his bishop pair mm. giving you even more trades that was pretty nice of him uh, so far, so good. So far, so good. Uh, not sure about this move, but it's fine. Yeah, uh, I wasn't really sh- Yeah, this is a good move. This is what you should have done on the earlier move. Mm-hmm. Just get the king involved towards the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah, F3, that's a bad move. Is it? Yeah. How come? Okay, so basically what happens is you know how uh, here your pawn in the middle it's not isolated because it has a buddy that potentially can defend it. Oh. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah. But after this trade, you no longer have that buddy. Yeah. So now if the opponent somehow comes with a rook you're going to struggle defending that pawn. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one of the reasons. The other okay. reason is that you kind of opened up for him to attack your king. Yeah. Um, which he immediately cashed in on. Yeah. He, he got his rook way into your position. Yeah. So even though I liked your pawn here, it was a good pawn. But replacing it doesn't mean the position is the same. Because yeah. now this guy is more in need of defense, and also it opened up towards your king. So should I have just, should I have just taken? Yes. Okay. You should have taken, and then what should you have done? Um. Then. Just uh, give me your first instinct. Um, I mean, I was thinking this, but... Okay. Yeah, no. What you want to do is move your king up. Mm. Okay. And then afterwards, uh, if he does nothing, you want to move your pawn forward. Okay. Why do I want this pawn move? Because um, you can try to get a pass pawn? No. Um. Oh, wait. I don't know. It's because now all the pawns are defending each other. Mm. So now yeah. the only thing I need to watch out for is this guy uh, behind. Yeah. And so I'm going to use my king to watch out for that guy. And these guys are protecting themselves. And then afterwards, I'm going to be maneuvering. So like okay. afterwards, I'm going to be working on getting my knight into the game. And towards the middle. Yeah. Uh, for instance, to this square. And then I'm going to yep. slowly try to build up my position. Okay. But I I can do that now. Because I never have to worry about this situation. Yeah. And I've seen you a couple of times trying to create pawn chains. Yeah. I've been doing but oftentimes when you've been doing that, you've done it in situations where... You move a pawn forward, and it's like a temporary pawn chain. 
but the opponent can just capture the pawn you moved forward and the pawn mm-hmm. chain is ruined yeah so um yeah i'm i'm not sure really how to address that but uh pawn chains are really only effective when they cannot be there's no opponent's pawns that can ruin the pawn chain by capturing yeah so not only do you need to be aware of key, the pawns being protecting each other but also like if uh, if black were to play a pawn up here you capture it because mm. allowing him to capture towards your pawn and then you would have to capture again then you would basically just have the same position without the uh, without the pawn here yeah I don't know how to add moves, add pieces. Uh, but yeah, I, I think you got the gist. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, so you lost a couple of pawns, but you won a couple of pawns, so that's fine. Mm. Uh, you have the right idea, trying to go after his pawns. Uh, yeah. But in this case, uh, it would have been better to go after this guy. Oh, yeah, because my... yeah gives me a pass pawn on the edge yeah but but also what happened in the game was that you went after this guy and he went after this guy mm. and if you had captured this guy you also would have protected your own guy yeah i'm not sure how to explain it but basically you want to attack where your king isn't already in control so your mm-hmm. king is kind of close to this general area yeah, and yeah. Then you want your rook to attack where the king cannot help. Okay. Um, yeah, but we exchanged some pawns. It was all good. Uh, everyone was having fun. But he started pushing his uh, pawn a bit sooner than you. Because mm. here you played rook d5. Yeah, it, my plan was to, to cut this off yes. from the king. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we made the same arrow immediate at the same time, so yeah, it yeah. kind of disappeared. Um, yes, and I understand the intention, and I understand that it's based on the rook end games we've been working on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the thing is that this rook, when it's only defended by the king, is very vulnerable. Yeah. So here he could have given a check to your king. And you're mm. struggling to keep the protection of the rook. Yeah. Basically, you have to go here to keep the protection. But then... And he just trades. Yeah. And you're just screwed. Yeah. Um, So, there's this saying in, in rook end games that you should always have your rook behind the pawn. And mm. the funny thing about this is that it, it applies to your own pawn and the opponent's pawn. Okay. So in this case, you would want to have the rook behind the pawn so that you're controlling, uh, trying to stop that pawn as it moves up the board. Mm. Alternately, sometimes it's also very valuable to have your rook behind your own pawn. Because then you can use that, um, and as the pawn pushes forward, uh, your r- rook's scope also increases. Because mm-hmm. every time the pawn moves forward, your rook is already protecting uh, the square the pawn went to. Yep. Um, so yeah, in this case, uh, I would say you should... Um, go behind the opponent's pawn because that's quicker than going behind your own pawn. I think I, I did, I because I, I, I've waited a while before I made this move because I wasn't, the thing I was worried about was that if I went like somewhere over there or if I didn't go here basically, then his king would just go after my pawn. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I and really frankly, you're, you're in some trouble here. Yeah. Because his pawn is so far away from your king. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you got the essence of the position. Because his king is closer to your pawn than your pawn is closer to his king, it means that black is the one closer to yeah. winning. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's still a draw with correct play, but you have to know some endgame strategies. Yeah. Um. Okay, so... 
yeah, he could have won the Rook. Uh, and... Yeah, I guess he did in the end. Yeah. And you both got a queen, but unfortunately his rook was protecting his queen. Because mm. otherwise you could have done this move. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay, but anyway. Uh, what did we learn? Yeah, we made some adjustments in the opening, I think. Oh, yeah. Did I? Oh, yeah. Okay, I remember, yeah. So you were only moving your e pawn once, yeah. Uh, and you're all on always going to capture on d five if it's not protected by a pawn. Yeah. In this situation. Okay, moving on. Ooh, a nine game, nine move win. Oh, wait, this, what was this? Oh yeah, I, I remember. This, this wasn't really anything, but okay. The anything. Queen pawn, knight out, bishop out, pawn up, e five. Wow, look at this. He tried to play. Um, this is uh, called the Albans gambit. Yeah, I kind of just win here. Like, or I, I'll get. Yeah, but th forward. this is basically why we move the knight, right? Yeah. Because he yeah. wants to do this, mm -hmm. which can be slightly tricky. Yeah. Uh, but with the knight already there, you just take it. Yeah. Oh, you take with the knight there, right? And not the yes. Pawn? Yes. Okay. Boom. Because if you take with a pawn, then you get doubled pawns. Mm, that's and those are more difficult to defend. Also, it's more difficult to defend your pawn here because it's so far away from the rest of your pieces. Yeah. Whereas when you take it, and then uh, if you go e3, you got like everything protected. Yeah. Uh, but here's a t new tendency in your game. Yeah. Queen b3. Yeah, this quite a lot. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. You started doing this a lot. Yeah, I've been people don't people don't realize. Yeah, I've been seeing it in your games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not gonna do that anymore, though. No. No, 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 no. no we're we're gonna take this out of your game. You're not allowed to do really? that. No, 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 no. You're not allowed to do that. You know what you are allowed to do? What? You're allowed to uh, move your pawn up, uh, get your bishop out, <laughs> and you're allowed to castle. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that's, that's the kind of chess we want to see. That's so it's so boring, though. Yeah. I, always, I, I, I could just win instantly with, with this. Mm. And I, they never know how to reply. I can always just I go here and then. Yeah, but Benji, thing, Benji, 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 here. Benji. Yeah. Okay, these guys don't know how to reply. But we're not preparing you for these guys, are we? No. We're preparing you for 1,300 rated players. Yeah. In uh, two weeks. Yeah. So we're going to have to play the 1,300 level game. Yeah. And that is not bringing our queen out as one of the first pieces. <laughs> Instead, we're going to just... Move the pawn out, get the bishop, yeah. and we're going to castle. Okay. And then you're going to mo move your knight. Mm -hmm. And then, if the opportunity is still there, then you're allowed to move your queen. Okay. So you're allowed to make the move, but not as early as you've been doing. Okay. Um, I would even go as far as to say you can move your pawn out and and then you're allowed to do this sometimes okay. if you feel like it yeah against my better judgment <laughs> but what you're not allowed to do is you're not allowed to put, go out with your queen in a position where your opponent can capture this guy and force your queen to move again 
and this square is quite vulnerable, so it's very likely you're gonna have to move the queen again. I mean, and, and, and at that point, you're gonna have been moving the queen around for three moves, and that's not yeah. okay. In this situation, I can't. Can you just go here? Uh, yes, you can, mm -hmm. and you're gonna win a lot of pawns. Yeah. Um, but let's say you take all those pawns. Yeah. Uh, and then your opponent goes rook c8. Okay. Mm. <laughs> um. Uh. And this yeah, is why we develop our pieces and get our king to safety before doing stupid shit. <laughs> okay? Okay. Yeah. The rook attacking both the queen and the bishop, and you lose. Mm. Even though you got all those pawns, you lose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah. So, no, no more bringing out the queen early. Okay. I saw you've been doing that for two days. <laughs> if I find out that Anna was the one inspiration behind that, you're in so much trouble. I'll, no, I'll you you so. don't want to. Uh, you don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to get Anna in trouble. You know. <laughs> I, I remember you saying that like this was the the main square in the queen's yes. gambit for the queen. Yes. But I I I I never know what to do with it. Like I I guess it connects the rooks, but it's like I don't know where it's what it's meant to do or anything. Yeah. But you feel like there's much more purpose here. Yeah. 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 No, it's a it's a decent square. For the for the queen, I just want you to get your um, your your king castled first. Mm -hmm. So you're you're not not allowed to do that, but you're not allowed to do it before you start, you know, getting some of these guys moving first. Yeah. Um. Okay. So oh, this was the game. Oh, this was the game. You did take those pawns. Mm. Ah, and here, instead of moving the knight, which surely would have won black the game, because there's no way Benji would have been able to withstand this free pawn. Uh, instead, he played his bishop, which was not great. <laughs> yeah, and he resigned. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, a quick win, but sometimes, even though you have quick wins... There are, you know, some corrections to make. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Uh, wow, you had an opponent who didn't play one e4. Mm. What a rarity. I think he did eventually. Or at least he eventually played. Yeah, but you're yeah. following our black scheme. I'm very happy. Yeah. Uh, not too happy about this guy, though. The bishop? Yeah. Mm, yeah, I, I never. I think this. This is. I'm not really sure where to play this. Um, yeah. I guess. I guess right here is better. I'm, yes. I'm so what we play. discussed is that if he doesn't play this e4 move, you just mm. do this, right? Pawn up, pawn up, knight out, bishop out, castle. Okay. P this is good, pretty much no matter what. So the the reason this is not good is because then white can immediately attack your bishop while getting a pawn in the middle. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to retreat, and then white is like, "Oh, I'm pretty sure I was I'm just pretty kidding." Sure that happens. I think that happened. I can't remember. I think it might happen oh, okay. this game. Maybe. Okay, so he played e3, you castled, and then he went d4. Yeah. Yeah. So you had to move your bishop back anyway. So you just wasted a move. Mm -hmm. um, okay, he's going for the fianchetto. Yeah. You're going for the C pawn before moving the knight out. I'm so proud. Yeah. Um, not sure about this move, though. No. Uh, yeah, but it's mostly because he's got two guys pointed against this pawn. Yeah, yeah, I... I... I did something about that, I think, eventually, because I, I saw that. Yeah, I, I would have preferred maybe if you uh, gave some support. Mm. 
would the, the would the queen be better? Because I I know I never normally do that. I normally play my queen. Um, I don't like uh, going with the queen because then there's a pin because your bishop is undefended. Also, going with the queen doesn't really help the rest of your pieces getting into play. So what I want to, uh, your standard plan here to be uh, is to go b6. Uh, he does something. Bishop b7. Mm -hmm. uh, and then knight d7. This is the most harmonious uh, development scheme for, for black. Okay. So and so you, instead you, of... You have these pawns in the middle, and yeah. you get your bishop pointing pointing towards the center. Yeah, because I'm normally used to just putting like as much pressure as I as possible on this, unless he plays. The yes, move. but that's the French. And in oh, the French, right. this pawn is not here; it's up here. Mm. You know, so because that pawn is higher up, then you put a lot of pressure. Because then mm. he doesn't have this pawn defending. Okay. So what am I playing right here? Am I playing the... Oh, I don't even know what I'm playing. Um, is, there, is there a name for it? Uh, a name for this? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it really has a name. Uh, okay. But it's just a good oh. kind of scheme for your pieces. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. It's very good you said that. Because that makes me understand that, you know, you have this standard plan of uh, going after the d4 pawn. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's good to kind of uh, understand the, the changes of circumstance. Yeah, I, I this is I didn't know what else to do. Because that's, yeah, that's what I normally do. So I kind yeah. of just kept going with it. Excellent. Well, then this became an opening uh, instruction. Mm. that you've done excellently so far this scheme is great uh yeah. pawn one forward two forward knight out bishop out king to safety so yeah. far so good and then i want your main scheme to be uh b6 bishop b7 and if you're allowed c5 yeah and then knight to d7 okay and then you got Look at these guys. You got mm. this, and you got uh, this, and you got all your pieces contributing. Yeah. Like this bishop is protecting this guy, this bishop is protecting this guy. Yeah. And the plan forward here, after you've done all of this, then you go knight up. Um. And sometimes you can even just be very aggressive. Mm. Like, just claim that you're being very aggressive with your pawns. Yeah. These guys are taking very good control of the middle. But I, I, I'm, I'm not sure you're going to remember all of these plans. Uh, but what I want you to remember is up to here. Yeah, I mean, normally by here, the, they would start trading. But I think in... In pog champs, for him, there's I think there's a good chance he could get to like this point, yeah. Without any trading, I don't know. I was watching Ludwig today. He he was pretty impatient. Hmm. I, I think in a tournament it might be different though. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but anyway, uh, as long as you get here, I'm happy. So just yeah. after you done, you've done all of these standard moves. Uh, you got to start uh, thinking about this bishop being blocked by its own pawns. Yeah. And how can we help that guy out? And then we hmm. go here. Yeah. Okay. But I also like that you were putting pressure in towards the center. Yeah. It's just the wrong time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and here, you know, going out with your queen early, we had this discussion. Yeah, I, I think I'd rather want you to to like get your bishop involved. I can't remember what I was thinking with this. Well, you were protecting your pawn and putting pressure on the bishop. It oh, makes oh yeah, yeah, sense. that's that's why. Yeah, yeah. it just makes. I did take the pawn. Yeah, no, it's it makes perfect sense. It's just that I don't want you.
getting your queen out that early if you can do something more useful instead. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so he took your pawn in the middle. Yeah. Attacking your knight. And here you thought you were going to be a genius. Because instead of capturing the pawn that just took a pawn from you, either with a knight or with your own pawn, with your own pawn, then you can also get your bishop involved. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah, yeah. Instead, you wanted to take this guy. Because yeah. you thought, oh my god, I'm the smartest <laughs> chess player alive. Because yeah. now I'm attacking his bishop. And I'm, yeah. I'm just not going to care about him attacking my knight. Uh-huh. Because, yeah, and that that's where it gets iffy. Yeah, hey, I thought, I didn't think you'd see this, because yeah. I do this a lot. And then he took here, creating even more chaos, because now if you take his knight, then he takes your bishop. Yeah. Um. So instead, you took his bishop, but then he took, oh yeah, he didn't even take this knight. Which would have been a good move, probably. Instead, he took your bishop, and now, well, now you actually could have taken this one, no? Uh, I mean, but now but if then, he takes back, then you take his. Yeah, maybe. I I don't know. I I just didn't want his knight to run away. Yeah, but in doing so, in taking this guy, you also allowed one of your guys to be taken. Yeah. This is what we do in a lot of the hanging pieces puzzles, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have to make a trade to get an, a piece away from being captured and then capture the free piece. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. This is just, know. you know, more, more puzzles. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and somehow you got out of this by only losing a pawn. Yeah. Miraculously. Surviving just losing a pawn, only to, on the very next step... Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember this. Not yeah. seeing that he was threatening your rook. Mm. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's just sad. Yeah. Okay, so he took your rook, but you had an idea as well. Uh, yeah. So you had the idea that his knight cannot move because then mm. you will capture his queen. Yep. Uh, one bad news about that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a pretty good move. Yeah. He didn't do that though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he moved his bishop back. You took the knight. He takes back. And what I think is funny about this game is that this is like the only game where you're not better from the opening. And, and you still managed to win it. Yeah, I can't remember how. Yeah, I'm you had sure. a really nice trick. I, I like that you played h6. Yeah. Uh, I was, you, I was, yeah. yeah, you anticipated some kind of back rank trouble here. Mm -hmm. um, and you moved the pawn that made it so that your knight was still defended. Because hmm. sometimes you can go this move as well for the same reason. Yeah. But then your knight will be undefended. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we're just going to fast forward to the trick you had. Yeah. Oh, I remember this from puzzles. Yeah. Yeah. This was pretty oh, this cool. Is, I got this from puzzles. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. So you take his bishop, allowing him to take your queen because you also opened an attack on his queen. Yeah. And your rook cannot be captured because your queen is uh, positioned to protect your rook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice uh, geometry there. And you won a free rook, and then you won the game. Yeah. Also, good checkmating. Yeah, like, I thought this was good. Yeah, well. he came yeah. in to checkmate you, and you were like, "No." Oh. Um. Wait, did, did I mess up? No, it's fine. Oh. I mean, you could have given checkmate in one move, but really, oh, uh, what mm. what you did was fine. You found a checkmate and you went for it, 
whether you go checkmate in two moves or checkmate in one move, it doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. So long as it che it's checkmate, the game is over. Yeah. You don't get points for style. You get points for winning. Very true. Okay. So this one is important because this guy plays the London system. Mm. And as you uh, your rating increases now, you're going to be facing this opening in almost every game. I really dislike playing playing this. I I hate playing. I don't like playing uh D5. I really I just prefer doing this, but I I kind of have to, I think. No, you can do know. E6 first. It's fine. Yeah, I, I don't know. Excuse it's, it's yeah, excuse me you told me to learn the Queen's Gambit decline that it starts with this and that, but it's I mean it's, it's, I guess it's the same thing, but Yeah, you can know. do this one. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Sometimes yeah. your opponents will go here. And it's just... And then it's the, the French. French. Yeah. Yeah. Which you like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but normally you're going to follow up with this one afterwards anyway, so it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. I feel like against... I mean, if he plays Queen's Gambit, I, I don't know, like, as much stuff because I've never... I'd, we haven't gone through it or anything. Yeah. As long as I get mixed up between uh, between the French and the uh, Queen's Gambit client. Yeah. Well, it's about where the e pawn is. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so this is the London system. Yeah. And the guy you played in this game, he was really into the plans of the London. So this mm. was a, a, is a pretty useful game to examine. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah. Here you played this move. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's because, it's because it's I was, I'm not really planning on playing here. So I was like, oh, I mean, I might as well just move my knight. But why are you not planning to go there? Um, because I do that in the French. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, uh, in both the French and the the whatever this is, you always want to to move this pawn forward and put pressure on the center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, but often you wait, so the timing is important. Often you mm -hmm. wait until you castle. Okay. In this circumstance, because here you actually got your pieces out as opposed to the French. Mm -hmm. So what we've been talking about that is a good as so long as your opponent doesn't play e4 on the first move. The good scheme is just uh, d5, e6, knight f6, bishop, bishop e7. Yeah. Um, castles. And then you get some freedom to do some stuff. Yeah. And basically, you go pawn here, and then pawn here. This is similar to what we discussed earlier, right? Mm hmm By just getting the pieces into position. Yeah, I don't. I don't like it when they move their like their knight up to something like this. Yeah. It's kind of just like it's. It's kind of annoying. I agree. But here's the good news. You can be equally annoying. Yeah. You can do that too. When you have your fianchetto. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And this is one of the reasons we want that. Yeah. We want that option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So yeah, still not a fan of this. Yeah. Uh, most of the time you want the C-pawn involved first, both in the French and this. Okay. Mm, yeah, and then you went back to our standard plan. And yeah. he moved knight e5. Mm. Okay. So here you could have made the exchange. Yeah, because my knight's not good. Yeah. Uh, instead, you moved your bishop 
But even though this means that you now have two pieces pointing against his knight. Uh, so it's free? Yeah, you still oh, no. cannot capture it. it. It actually makes it less likely that you can get rid of this guy. Because now if you capture it, there's a double attack. Oh. Uh... So one of the advantages of not having put the bishop in a more active position than this is that you are able to capture because when the pawn comes to threaten you, uh, you just move back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, same with this queen. You think you're trying to attack this e5 square, mm. but like there's a pawn in the way, so you're not really able to do anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and here you blundered. Yeah, he didn't see it though. I remember looking at the the analysis yeah. thing and it said I blundered. Um, and then, you know, he blundered, you blundered, he blundered, you blundered, <laughs> he blundered, and then you did something. Yeah. But I think the principle of what you did is pretty good. I think, so, I, I think... If here you had gone knight d7 to challenge him, mm -hmm. then that would have been good. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want you to be aware. What what do you do if he does this? Uh, yeah. Oh wait. Yeah. Mm. No. No. I'm. I'm. I'm just thinking. Mm. How to explain this? Yeah. So I in this case I want you to go either this one yeah. or or this one. But it's a bit of a special circumstance and I'm trying to explain how well I'm trying to think about how I can explain what makes this different. I, I oh, think yeah. the best way for me to explain is that his bishop is pointing up here mm -hmm. and he has another bishop pointing up here. Yeah. Um, and so the most solid way for you to block this bishop is by moving your pawn forward in such a way that your pawn is protected by two other pawns. Yeah. So for him to break through this barrier is going to be a, a pain in the ass, basically. Yeah. Because right now, uh, for a bishop to get through a pawn that's protected by two other pawns, that's... Basically impossible. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, but he blundered the pawn in the middle and you took it. And then you played this d4 move, which was interesting. Yeah, I, I, I was kind of hoping that he didn't see this. Yeah, but it, it kind of, it screams of one trick pony, right? What do you mean? Well, if he had taken this. Yeah, oh, I re yeah, I I regretted doing the move after I did it because I realized that if he just does that then it opens up this. Yeah. Okay. But I remember he took with this and yeah. yeah. Okay, so you just missed it. Yeah. You missed his defense. But so did he. Yeah. No, but fine, cuz I I was like if you're doing this because you thought there's a chance he's going to fall for your trap, then I'm not going to approve. But if it's just that you didn't see his defensive uh, yeah. method, then that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, for what it's worth, I also want to mention that just having two pawns in the middle is pretty strong. Okay. Yeah. But no, I you saw a trick and you went for it. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. And you got the you got the knight, so you're fine. Mm -hmm. Um, here, I was wondering. Uh, did you consider mm -hmm. this move? Uh, wait, go back. Um, so, oh, no, no, no. I f I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Because then he captures while also removing uh, the guy you had to defend your bishop. Yeah, that's tough. 
But you're right. you're still winning because he he cannot take your bishop because then you go make an attack mm -hmm. and you win the rook. That's true. So it wasn't a mistake, but I I thought maybe you didn't notice the ampassant. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're just going after his king, and you're doing it pretty well. Yeah, this was an interesting moment. Mm, yeah, um, I thought I'd work on my end game a little bit. Yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't like the decision, but I really like the way you won the end game. I can't really remember, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I think... The thing is, like, his pieces are completely tied down to the defense of this pawn. That's true. So if you want to do this, you can do it later on after you kind of push your pawns for first. Yeah. But uh, in terms of uh, practicing end games, I thought it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, two pawns up in a pawn oh, end game. This was, this was just him being bad, though. Like, well, I don't know what he's trying to do. Like, I mean, not not here, but like after, like in a few moves. I just don't know what what it's like. He was, I guess, he was planning to go to the edge, but then. Yeah, the but I mean, you were game. using. Here you were going after these guys, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's... So it's if he like, goes yeah. back, then, you know, he's just not doing anything. Mm, but he's also just giving me a free queen. I, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, but the thing do. is, long term, you're going to get a free queen anyway. Yeah. So if you go back, it means that, you know, he's just going to go here. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, but let me ask you uh, yeah. if this move, what were you going to do? If that move. Um, probably just take. Yeah. So here we have that situation where your pawns are dependent on each other. Hmm. So if you were to just keep going to the edge, yeah, uh, this is kind of similar to the position where we studied, where the king cannot take one of the pawns because then the other one is going to run away. Yeah. So um, in this situation, of course, taking is a good move, but um, I, I think it, it's better to just have that situation where these two pawns are... Uh, defending each other indirectly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, but you got a queen, and then you won with a queen. So we're yep. Gucci. Yep. Uh, let's do one more. How are we on time? Oh, we're over an hour. Um, let's do this one at last. Okay. Okay, so you got the white pieces playing d4. Yeah. Uh, moving the knight out, moving the pawn. Yes, yes, yes. Knight out. Okay, that's fine. Uh, bishop out. You didn't move your bishop to your normal square. Yeah, I've been I've been like experimenting, seeing which square would be best. Yeah. Okay, I like it. That's good. Uh, yeah. Well, would Would this be best? Um, I mean, honestly, in this position, you're supposed to go here. Mm. But it's a bit counterintuitive. But it's Locks it's the basically thing. the reason for it is that um, in these situations, when he has this pawn instead of this pawn. Yeah, like normally you would have this one instead, right? These two guys. Mm -hmm. But when yeah. he has these two guys. Uh, you can he can capture this one, and when you open up to t take his, then he can go uh, this b5 move, and then this yeah, guy I've, protects I've, this guy protects this guy. I've had this before, or I've had uh, I I've yeah I've definitely played against it before, and I remember seeing like some there's a way to like counter it by doing something like here and then i don't know with your yeah. work over here but I, I i saw it on tiktok i can't remember what it was though. yeah and yeah. but that counter is like a specific um in a specific moment 
Yeah. And it doesn't always work well for white. Mm. So, in general, um, in general, when the guy goes here, you're supposed to go. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Bless you. You're supposed to go this one to immediately just make sure he doesn't take. Okay. Uh, and then what would I do with my with my bishop? Uh, you would uh, fian fi kiddo. Okay. This is kind of similar to the positions uh, we studied when you were black, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has this, uh, this like, house. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the one you liked, yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so it's basically similar strategy, just that uh, black doesn't get the pieces into as good positions as white does. Yeah. Vice versa. Well, one of the reasons is that now, for black, in order to make that same pressure in the middle, with all of these pawns looking at each other, the pawn mm -hmm. first moved one and then another one. Yeah, that's true. And in addition, you have the white pieces, so you have an extra move. Yeah. So basically, you have two extra moves. Mm -hmm. uh, which is why, when he moves this guy to support, you should go just make sure you don't lose this guy okay which is a, like a very safe way to play yeah um and since you have the white pieces here uh you can even consider going here with the bishop okay uh but i mean i like your normal strat of just doing one square but mm -hmm. um in this circumstance I guess it's doing more stuff here as well, because, like, it's pressuring this. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely doing more stuff. It's just that with black, you're kind of the... You first have to just get your pieces into play for you can do before you can do anything aggressive. Whereas with white, you have that extra uh, time first from having the first move and then from black being slow with his pawn. Yeah. So then you can go for a more aggressive setup. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Yeah, that was good. Good. Good talk. And also, we had to talk about this move, right? Yeah. And what are you gonna do instead? I am going to play uh, here and yep. then here. Yes. Yes. Um. But it kind of worked out for you, uh, because he went here. Or she. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you took that one. <laughs> and then that's how it goes. <laughs> that is how it goes. Um, let's see if anything else important happened. Yeah, I, I'm interested in this move. Because basically, after you want a piece, you just want to get into defense, right? Yeah, I mean... I don't know, I just didn't like my queen being super out. Yeah, and that's kind of ironic coming from the guy who played his queen out early <laughs> on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can just win a pawn. I so feel I like know. you just went back with the queen to keep it close to your king now that you have an extra piece. Yeah, I mean, it's like got something and i'll just yeah not risk anything no else. It, it makes sense but I, I would rather you just got your king to safety uh mm. because honestly getting your king to safety is going to be safer than moving your queen for the fourth time yeah oh, oh. yeah uh but then you got your bishop out your opponent initiating trades and you're like yes thank you very much yeah. And you're initiating more trades uh, because you have an extra bishop. Mm -hmm. And the opponent is like, no. And you're uh, like, okay. Let's make some trades with the knights. That's fine. Okay, the queen pointing down on your king. Oh, right. I can't remember what I did here. I think because I was debating on moving this here. But I was, I was questioning it because it got rid of my... I'd, you're not meant to move these these pawns. Yes. 
so I wasn't. I think I did in the end, but I I I, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna say this pawn, you are allowed to move. Mm-hmm. Uh, this pawn you can only move one when you have the king. Close. Yeah. And this pawn, you are absolutely <laughs> under no circumstances to move two forward. But it, it traps it. It's a free. It's a free bishop. Uh, and that's why I'm not going to yell at you that much. But <laughs> remember how you did the lesson with Anna, and you moved your pawn forward. Yeah, in front of yeah. Your king? I, I, I was. This is the thing. I was like, oh, I'm, I know I'm not meant to be doing this, but it's a free bishop. Yeah. It's like uh, I don't know. It's, can't just not have a free bishop. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it kind of worked out. He could have taken this one, though. Yeah, yeah, just take his bishop. Yeah. Oh, it turns out it wasn't really a free bishop. Because with this check, if you now move your king, then uh, mm, the pawn yeah, is captured. Yeah. But I mean, my bishop. So, so you had to move right. your bishop. But now they could have played this one. Ooh. Mm, that would have been very good. But he didn't. Thankfully. Yeah. I think. Yeah. No, she she didn't. I, I'm guessing it's a girl, right? Leah? Little, maybe. Little. It sounds like a girl. Um... Yeah, so you got away with it. Yeah. Um, and you got another bishop. And then what did you do here? I think I I went here. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This 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 sucks. Uh, that ain't good. All the yeah, effort you hurt. put into winning that bishop. Yeah. That annoyed me. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's just puzzles, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, and you still got the win, so it's fine. Kind of trapped his queen there. Yeah. So if she went here, then you could have gone here. Yeah. There's no way out. Uh, yeah. Good job. Um, did we discuss your new white opening? No, I'm... Well, we made some adjustments, right? Yeah. So, um, from now on, when you when they support with this guy, yep. which also can support in the other direction, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go and protect this one immediately. Um, and you're not going to play your queen out as early. Mm -hmm. Um, and we talked a bit about your black openings in your French. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be more aware of this one mm -hmm. in case they use the bishop to defend. Because yeah. you missed a couple of opportunities there. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely getting it now, though, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, and, yeah, of course, uh, and the French is different to the Queen's Gambit. Mm -hmm. So, like, even though the positions resemble each other, uh, the plans are somewhat different because the pawn is further back. Yeah. So what is your plan here with the black pieces? Um. Uh, I think it's oh, it's um. This. Yeah, first castle. Oh yeah, castle, castle, and then that. Oh yeah, castle, and then yeah, and then this, and then this first maybe, and and then and then there. Yeah. And what more? Um, play here. No, not there. N not there. Okay. Uh, because then you block the bishop's influence towards the middle. 
But it's gonna eventually move, no? Um, no. The, 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 we want the knight on a square where it doesn't really need to move. Um, I guess uh, here then. Yeah. Okay. And we also talked about uh, an, a plan for being aggressive. Oh, yeah. After you've done all of this. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. One more move. Um, one more move. Um, is it taking? No. Uh, what was it? Um, oh, wait, wait, there. Oh, yeah, so you have both the, both the pawns. Yeah. Okay. And, and in, in general, uh, if white captures your pawn, um, you try and capture back with your own pawn. Instead of my bishop. Yes. I guess it's because it's And if he captures bishop. your pawn, then you uh, try and take back with your pawn. Okay. So you want to be using your pawns to recapture because then you will completely control inside uh, their half. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I think this has been good. I'm looking forward to yep. watching you break a uh, thousand. We'll have a little celebration. Yeah, I can't jinx it though. Maybe I'll be stuck on 980 forever. <laughs> this is the guy who gained what 80 rating points the last day. <laughs> yeah, I kept, but I I got up to like not, I got like one or two games away from from 1k and then. I lost, like, I went on that, like, free losing streak. Well, if it was uh, easy, it wouldn't be worth doing, would it? No, it's true. That is true. What, what what I find crazy is that I'm still in the, like, the 59th percentile. And it just shows how much I suck. I, d I, don't, know, I don't know how. Like, I thought I was getting pretty good. But I'm still in, like, the... I'm, I'm worse than the average player. Um, which I found surprising, but, you know, it is what it is. Well, you're going to be 50th percentile pretty soon, right? Yeah, but that's still the average player, you know? Well, I guess I haven't been playing that much. Oh, I think you're too player. used to the, like, the uh, Fortnite percentiles. Where you I, get I mean, first percentile without even trying. Yeah, I know, but it's still, it's like 50, 50th percentile. Like, I, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I played one of the Fortnite competitions placement only i basically i yeah. cannot kill anyone if if i see someone i'm dead <laughs> and i i got i think i got like uh 35th or or 40th percentile okay so that that has to be your goal yeah okay okay <laughs> i think yeah mm. beating my per Fortnite percentile <laughs> yeah be better at chess or yeah be better at chess than you're at Fortnite. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. This has been good. Uh, I will. I will go break one thousand rating then. Um, and then I will send you a message. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Thank you very much. And I will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Yeah. See you. Okay, that was uh, Benji and some game reviews, trying to correct a little bit of his openings, just some minor adjustments. Minor adjustments is all that's needed because Benji is killing, killing the openings. I tell you, he's uh, he's getting like winning positions all the time. So it's just a matter of, of managing to convert a good position. Are you coaching Benji every day for an hour until Pog Champs? Yes, Rory, that is the plan. Um, so we've had three days where we couldn't do it because of some Fortnite competitions. Uh, and also I cannot do on Sunday because I'm having a flight back home to Oslo. But other than that, every single day between um, 11 p.m. and 12 p.m. Oslo time, that's, um, sorry, 11 p.m. and 12 a.m., 12 midnight, uh, and that's, uh, between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern. That's our like our normal go-to 
starting time. Uh, do you think he can improve enough to win it? Yes, I believe so, Hunted. Um, I really do believe that. But there's this French guy who's grinding. He's grinding so hard. He has like 200... Uh, no, he has like 1,000 rapid games played the last two months. So uh, I, I would say Benji definitely going to be top four. Uh, if it's going to be enough to win, I'm not sure. But we're, we're definitely going to give it our best shot. 